Ladies and gentlemen, the global technological battle, a game of intricate chess, is now at a critical juncture. Today we'll delve into the escalating chip war, which has recently unfolded unexpected twists and turns. Have you ever wondered about the intricacies of technology and politics? How the very machines that power your smartphones, computers, and AI are caught in a whirlwind of diplomacy, strategy, and business? Allow me to guide you through this fascinating world. Hello, and welcome back to Innovative Czech YouTube channel, where we delve into the innovative and transformative projects changing our world. Please subscribe, like, and comment to boost our videos. Now, let's begin. In the recent past, the U.S. was plotting its final move in the global chip war, strategizing to involve the Netherlands to impose a complete ban on lithography machine exports to China. This move was aimed at hitting China where it hurts most. But guess what? China was prepared. Can you imagine the foresight and intelligence it took to navigate this complex situation? Creating domestic lithography machines, China managed to dissolve the threat. But would they let it pass without a fight? Of course not. Here's where the plot thickens. Why, you might ask, was the Netherlands helping the U.S.? Was it wise for them to become liable for such a risky game? China's retaliation was swift and decisive, bottlenecking the Netherlands' market share, leaving them to complain to the U.S., but then an unexpected twist occurred. What do you think happened next? The U.S. claimed that the Netherlands' decision was its own. The hypocrisy was revealed and cracks began to show in the trilateral treaty against China. Is this real politic or betrayal? How do you think the Netherlands felt being used as a scapegoat? Could they have foreseen the game the U.S. was playing? This episode opened an entirely new chapter. The U.S. did not merely want to limit China's access to average technology. It wanted to suppress its growth, especially in the cutting-edge AI sector. Here's where it gets interesting. The U.S. itself does not make the lithography machines required for this control, so how could they enforce the restriction? Enter the Netherlands and its company Asmol, the manufacturers of these vital lithography machines. With a single order from the U.S., they announced a halt in sales to China. What were they expecting in return? Loyalty? Trust? Have you ever trusted someone only to be betrayed? Imagine the Netherlands' position as they found themselves caught in a web spun by the U.S. By the 30th of June, 2023, equipment was added to the restrictions and China's foresight became evident as they had already begun stockpiling. Now capable of producing 28 nanometer chips, China turned the tables on the Netherlands, sparking an intense turn of events. Can you grasp the cunning nature of these political maneuvers? The U.S. shifting the blame, making the Netherlands a convenient scapegoat, was nothing short of a political masterpiece or a cruel betrayal, depending on how you look at it. But what's the real story here? How did the U.S. manipulate the regulations, and what were the actual intentions behind the trilateral agreement involving Japan and the Netherlands? Was it really a partnership, or was it a sinister strategy? This move would backfire, leading to unforeseen consequences for the main beneficiaries of chip exports, Japan and the Netherlands. Can you picture a non-oil producing country convincing Saudi Arabia to stop selling oil? Only for Saudi Arabia to stop selling oil? Only for Saudi Arabia to realize its mistake later? And what about Asmol? Shackled by U.S. restrictions, it needed a license to sell its machines, all orchestrated by the U.S. Can you believe how they accepted these shackles only to complain later? In this complex web of deceit and manipulation, the Netherlands began to roll out an export licensing system for high-end deep ultraviolet lithography machines. ASMO found itself in a precarious situation, facing the worst-case scenario they had warned the U.S. government about who was truly behind all this trouble. Was it not the U.S. pulling the strings behind the scenes? Do you see how this tricky move left the Netherlands feeling duped and exploited? Ladies and gentlemen, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The game is far from over. The Netherlands, now aware of the U.S.'s insincerity, must strategize their next move. Perhaps his mail is thinking of punishing the U.S. and the Netherlands. Can you feel the tension in the air? 
As we continue to unravel this grand play, we see hidden agendas and underhanded deals bubbling beneath the surface. Isn't it fascinating to observe how a single piece of technology, the extreme ultraviolet lithography machine, can rattle entire international policies? If the US can betray the Netherlands, what stops the Netherlands from doing the same? There is a recipe brewing that might just shake the US's entire chip policy against China. Are you as intrigued as I am by how this chip war has become a self-inflicted downfall for the US? What's your take on how U.S. insincerity toward its allies is brewing a concoction for its decline? Isn't it fascinating how the interplay of geopolitics and technology shapes the landscape of our world? Who would have thought that the humble lithography machine, key to the production of microchips, would spark a clash between global powers? How did we arrive here? And what might these clashes mean for the future? First, let's go back in time and ask ourselves, what led to the so-called chip war? Why has the U.S. been so persistent in limiting China's access to cutting-edge technology? Isn't it intriguing to imagine that behind the devices we use every day, there's a fierce battle for control, power, and influence? The U.S. has been playing a complex game, and one of its strategic moves was to influence the Netherlands to restrict lithography machine exports to China. But can we honestly say this was unforeseen by China? How did China respond to such a maneuver? They began to manufacture their domestic lithography machines. Was this a brilliant counter move or an inevitable step in technological evolution? Now, I want you to ponder this. Can retaliation ever go unanswered? China's actions weren't simply reactive. They were strategic, intended to send a message not just to the US, but to the world. But what was that message? As we delve deeper into this geopolitical drama, cracks began to emerge in the seemingly solid alliance between the US, the Netherlands, and other key players. Do you believe the US was sincere in its alliance with the Netherlands? Or was the Netherlands simply a pawn in a larger game? The response of the US claiming that the decision to halt sales to China was solely the Netherlands reveals a complex and perhaps hypocritical stance. Could the Netherlands truly have expected loyalty from the US? Was their trust misplaced? And how might they seek retribution for this perceived betrayal? Consider the larger picture here. Countries across the globe are vying for supremacy in AI and cutting edge. Chips are the lifeblood of this endeavor. Do you think it's fair for one nation to believe it can be the sole caretaker of this powerful technology? Is the US in the right in only allowing average chips to go to China, limiting its potential in AI training? Now, let's look at the Netherlands' role, particularly the company Asmol, a leading manufacturer of the latest lithography machines. Was it simply following orders from the US when it decided to stop its machine sales to China? Or were there underlying expectations and hopes that were ultimately dashed China's swift response, its burgeoning domestic production of chips, and the subsequent escalation of tensions paint a picture of a tumultuous and rapidly changing landscape. Have you ever thought about how global politics might affect the technology in your pocket? The unfolding scenario brought forth questions of trust, loyalty, and strategic foresight. The Netherlands found itself as the scapegoat in a situation that many would argue was orchestrated by the US. But was it a mere victim, or did it play an active role in this unfolding drama? The trilateral treaty involving Japan and the Netherlands was ostensibly aimed at controlling semiconductor manufacturing equipment. But was it merely a sinister strategy to hinder China's growth? What does it mean for Japan and the Netherlands to find themselves paying a heavy cost, while China remains unharmed, these questions lead us to the core of a much deeper issue. If the US, a non-chip producing nation, can manipulate key players in the industry like Saudi Arabia with oil, what does this say about global power dynamics? Was it foolish of the Netherlands and Japan to accept such a treaty? Now I invite you to reflect on the situation of ASMO, a company caught in a web of international politics. Its ambitions to sell to China worth billions were thwarted by agreements, were thwarted by agreements, 
with the U.S. was this a uh, noble intent jeopardized by deception or a risky gamble that didn't pay off? And what of the abrupt pivot by the U.S. audaciously declaring the export ban as the Netherlands' decision alone? Do you feel the Netherlands was right to lament its trust, or should they have seen the deception coming? Friends, the story doesn't end there. This situation brought about a cascade of consequences affecting global trade, trust between nations, and the future of technology itself, from licensing systems to diplomatic tensions. The implications were far-reaching. The future of ASML hung in the balance, with its reputation and business at risk. Do you believe that companies should accept being shackled by government agreements, or should they fight for their autonomy and interests? In this intriguing game, the U.S. appeared to pull the strings pressuring the Netherlands while simultaneously distancing itself from the decisions made. This left the Netherlands feeling taken advantage of, a sensation that many would argue was not unfounded. And yet, the Netherlands still had an opportunity to rewrite the rules, to change the course of events by September 1st. Could they fix things? Should they fix things? What would you do in their place? Asmo's dilemma caught between agreements with the U.S. and China, reflected a broader struggle within the industry. And here's where the plot thickens. The possibility that ASMO might punish the U.S. and Netherlands by continuing to supply China. Was this a daring move or a desperate attempt to regain control? Peeling back the layers, we uncover a grand play with hidden agendas and secret deals. It's not just about machines. It's about influence, control, and the future of technology itself. Can you imagine how the U.S. would react if China developed a fleet of lithography machines by reverse engineering those provided by ASML? In the final analysis, we see a world where trust is scarce, betrayal is common, and the struggle for supremacy is relentless. Isn't it true that this chip war may lead the U.S. down a path of isolation? What are your thoughts on how these dynamics might shape our world? I encourage you to reflect, question, and engage with this complex and thrilling narrative of technology, power, and influence. It's not just a story about chips and machines. It's a tale of human ambition, strategy, and the never-ending quest for dominance. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Stay tuned, and let's continue to explore the unfolding saga of global development, innovation, and intrigue. If this story intrigues you, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.